Welcome back into Clay and Buck. He is a veteran. He is a financier. He is an American patriot, and he's running for Senate in Pennsylvania in the ultimate battleground state. Dave McCormick back with us here. Dave, the big day is upon us. Tell us, what are you what are you hearing? What's your team telling you? Turn out data. Bring us into Battlefield, Pennsylvania as much as you can. Be with you guys. It is a spectacular day here in Pennsylvania. It's absolutely beautiful. 80 degrees. A lot of people in line are wearing shorts. And, um, you know, I've been to two polling spots already. I'm uh, in Allegheny County, which is a, a big 12% of the vote is here in Allegheny County. And uh, huge lines. Uh, big turnout. Um, it feels like uh, a lot of a lot of energy. And uh, you know, for me, uh, what we have to do is we got to get get a huge uh, rural turnout. And uh, all the emails I'm getting from the rural areas are, uh, are are very strong. So big turnout there. And then we have to see what the turnout's going to be in uh, in the urban areas in Philadelphia, particularly for the Democrats. And they've got a lot of ground to make up because the mail-in ballots. Uh, have decisively moved in the direction of Republicans. The Democrats still have an advantage, but it's many hundreds of thousands less than previous elections. And so it's a big burden of turnout for the Democrats in Philadelphia and, and urban areas. And uh, so far, it looks promising for us. A lot of good momentum, but we'll have to see. Uh, Dave, uh, had a great time hanging out with you at the Penn State, Ohio State tailgate on Saturday. Phenomenal feedback from so many people out there at that game. And we went to dinner, had great feedback the night before from people in the restaurant. When you look right now at the uh, at the voting underway, are you hearing that it's going pretty smoothly? What would you tell our audience if they haven't voted yet that they should know as they prepare to vote? Yeah, well, Clay, it was great having you. We got to get you out there next time, Buck. It was like... Walking around a Penn State football game with Clay is like, it's like being with Mick Jagger or something. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm a huge and, uh, fan a great... of whatever the Penn State mascot, <laughs> etc. The is. Nittany Lions, Buck. There we go. It My was, favorite. It was it was really really fun. Um, you know, listen. I think uh, I think the big uh, question here will be uh, for 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 those of you who are listening. Number one, you got to get out there. Please get out there and get out there early and vote. Uh, we've got to have a huge turnout for Republicans because Democrats win the mail-in ballot, even if they're going to win it by a lot less than the past. So that's number one. Number two, if you get in line before the polls close, then it doesn't matter if the polls close. They have to keep uh, working the polls until you get to vote. So you've got to get there before the polls close. The polls close at 8. But if you're going to vote, please do vote and get there early and stay in line and complete the vote. We've got huge lines, which means people have to wait. And that's unfortunate, and we need to do a better job of processing it. But at the same time, it's in part because there's such a big turnout. So make sure you get to vote in there. Get your friends, get your family members, drive people to the polls. Uh, unless, of course, they want to vote the other side. Then you can leave it home. <laughs> <laughs> but we need your vote. That's the key message, and uh, it's a beautiful day. So I think we've got great turnout. What are you um, What are you hearing in terms of the rural, the early rural turnout? Um, my understanding is, Dave, that the – uh, that the counties, just the number of aggregate counties where Republicans and Trump were up in 2020 versus the number of aggregate counties to today is a huge difference. Is that is can, can oh, you speak yeah. to we, that we, a little bit? Made, I mean, if rural turnout is massive, progress. that's yeah. obviously a great indicator. It's going to help us a lot. There's uh, 67 counties in Pennsylvania. 58 of them are red. So these are red counties, and uh, in, since 2016, when President Trump won, we've moved registration uh, from Democrat to Republican about 700,000 votes. So Trump, when Trump won in 16, there was a, a million more Democrats than Republicans. Today, there's under 300,000 more Democrats than Republicans. So the composition of the electorate has changed a lot. Uh, it's partially because we've registered new Republicans, partially because you got conservative Democrats that have flipped and become Republicans. So those rural counties are key. Uh, that's where I grew up. I grew up in Bloomsburg in uh, northeastern Pennsylvania. we got to get those counties out big. Early indications are they're coming out big, and uh, that's going to be great for us. And a lot of those are new registered voters. And, uh, and then the second thing we got to do is, is continue to build on this coalition. I mean, we, we are the party of the Big Ten. We are the party of Elon Musk and Tulsi Gabbard and, and Robert Kennedy and Joe Rogan. Uh, we're the party that's appealing to trade 
uh, trade unions. Uh, these guys, you go, you go to the national and you have uh, an endorsement uh, at the national leadership level for Harris and Bob Casey. You go to a job site and walk through the parking lot like I do, you got pickup trucks, gun racks, and Trump and McCormick signs. So we gotta we got to continue to build in that coalition of working families. I think you're going to see the minority votes uh, in the Hispanic community and, uh, and also in the uh, African-American community move uh, in the direction of Republicans. Uh, and I think the other thing you're going to see is a, a shift in the, in the Jewish voters. You know, we got 300,000 Jewish voters in Pennsylvania, and they have been dismayed and terribly disappointed by the weakness of Biden and Harris and Casey on anti-Semitism and supporting Israel. So you're going to see those groups, I think, move, move uh, some in our direction. I think that's the big tent that we're building. And, uh, and this is what's going to require to get America back on track. So uh, President Trump did his next to last rally here last night in Pittsburgh. And the energy level was incredible. It was in, in uh, PPG Arena, the, the Penguins Arena, and it was incredible energy. And uh, I felt great about it. When, when we were headed home, we just said to each other, my wife and I, that uh, there's something special that's going on here. We can feel it everywhere we go. Dave, do you think Kamala Harris might wish she had picked Josh Shapiro as her running mate? No doubt about it. I mean, listen, I, you know, I, I, know, I don't know him well. I know him a little bit. Um, he's a, I don't agree with him on many things, but he's a very talented man. There's no doubt about it. And, um, and, and this is, I think, an, a sad commentary on the Democratic Party. I don't think there's any doubt that he was Jewish. Probably Jewish. Factored in her decision not Let's get him back up if we can. Yeah. We just lost him. We'll call him back here for a couple of minutes. Buck, um, what he was saying is, I think, potentially going to emerge as a major discussion point, which is Pennsylvania has a really popular Jewish Democrat governor. Instead of picking him in the state that's going to matter the most, Kamala Harris picked Tim Walls. And you and I told our audience, told everybody out there listening right now, when that happened, this was the first really significant decision that Kamala Harris had to make. And I think she swung and missed on the impact of that choice because if it's going to come down to 50,000 or 100,000 votes in Pennsylvania as to who the next president of the United States is, and I think that's very likely, maybe even closer than that, I think she's going to regret having picked Tim Walls. Well, I think there's poetic justice in the possibility that Democrats and Kamala Harris specifically may lose Pennsylvania because they have to pander to the anti-Semitism of part of their base in Michigan. I mean, I, I, I think that's a very valid reason. If Kamala Harris wants to coddle anti-Semites and that costs her the election, good. She should lose the election. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah, so, I agree. There you know, should be consequences for poor yes. choices. It, 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 and not just poor in terms of political. I mean, I just think it's gross. I, I think that the fact that, because she pretends, and look, the, the Democrats are probably going to win a majority of the Jewish vote. But all of this is premised on the the make believe situation of the Democrats somehow are not actually uh, very much playing footsie with, cozy with, coddling true anti Semites. I mean, people who just despise Jews and the Jewish people. They may just complain about Israel a lot, but it really is about Jews here in America and everywhere else. And if that costs Democrats the race, then that's to me absolutely the Democrats getting what they deserve. We got Dave again. Yeah, Dave's yeah, back up. Let me ask that, you guys. this. Uh, I know you're traveling country, and you're country working. Roads, guys. <laughs> yeah, country roads for sure. Let me ask you this. Um, a lot of people out there watching the results come in tonight. When do you expect to have some resolution as to what might happen in Pennsylvania? You yourself, where will you be? And what do you expect that time frame to feel and look like? I'm going to be in Pittsburgh. We have a big watch party. We're going to have hundreds of... Uh, friends and supporters, my mom and dad, my, my wife's mom and dad, and uh, our, our kids. And uh, I think we'll know a lot by midnight. I don't think the race will be called by midnight, but I think we know what our targets are for each of the areas. I think we'll have a good feel for Allegheny County and Bucks County and some of the southeast turnout in Philadelphia. And, um, you know, based on the mail-in ballot data, I think we know what the Democrats need to do on turnout to be able to win this and what we need to do. So I, my guess is we'll, we'll have something official in the wee hours of the morning, and we'll probably have a pretty good sense of directionally by midnight. Now, what are the, what are the scenarios, Dave? I don't want to 
get too far ahead of ourselves here, but what are the scenarios where this gets dragged out in Pennsylvania beyond election night? Well, if it's less than a half a percent, there's an automatic recount. And, um, and so that would be a scenario where it gets dragged out a bit. And uh, obviously, if there's, you know, uh, some problem with getting the votes counted, uh, you know, the state has made a change where they can't, the poll workers can't stop working until all the votes are counted. So the governor and the secretary of state has assured us that, uh, that we won't have the problems we've had in the past and we'll get this uh, the final count here rather quickly. But uh, if somehow that didn't happen, that would obviously delay things. And I'm hopeful we're going to we're going to do a much better job than we have in the past here in Pennsylvania. And we've got about 7000 poll workers and about 500 lawyers <laughs> deployed across Pennsylvania between uh, uh, work of, of my campaign and the RNC uh, to make sure we get a fair shake and we get these ballots processed appropriately. Dave, uh, last question for you, and I know you've been working uh, your behind off and uh, your wife's been with you every step of the way, too. Uh, you mentioned when you think we'll get a result. One more analysis question here. People out there, we don't want you to split your vote, right? If you're going to vote for Donald Trump, you need to be voting for Dave McCormick, too. How connected do you think the final Trump tally and your tally will be? I think they'll be pretty close. You know, President Trump's uh, him being on the ballot helps helps me a lot because he really helps with turnout, particularly in those rural areas. Um, but, you know, I'm hoping I'm helping him some, too, because um, I'm running a campaign that, uh, that I think will appeal to moderates and, uh, and maybe some conservative Democrats and independents. So I'm hoping I can perform there. I'm obviously running my own campaign, but I'm hoping uh, my performance there might help the president a bit. And we've been very aligned. And, um, and uh, you know, if he wins and I'm in the Senate, I'm going to hopefully be a great, great force for – helping get some of these common sense policies in place to get our country back on track. All right, Dave McCormick, everybody. Dave, we are rooting for you. And more than that, we're telling everybody who's listening in Pennsylvania, you have not voted. Get to the polling place. You are in the battleground state, and you can give it to Trump. You can give it to Dave McCormick, and you'll do the whole country a huge favor. You guys guys are great. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks so Dave much, McCormick, Dave. Appreciate you. West Point grad, and let's put him in the Senate. Fabulous guy. And I'm telling you, Pennsylvania, you decide the election for president, but you could also decide the election for Senate. We'll talk a little bit more about that and more. But I want to tell you, go ahead and download the Price Picks app. Thursday, I'm going to give you a pick that I hope is going to hit on 10 to 1 payout. If you're in Texas, if you're in California, if you're in Florida, if you're in Georgia, maybe you've been feeling left out, 30-plus states, I'm betting by the weekend, a lot of you are going to be ready to kick back, have a beer, and be able to celebrate what happened in the election and just watch some football without political ads every single commercial break. And if that sounds like you, go ahead and download the Price Picks app right now. Use my name, Clay. That's C L A Y, prizepicks.com. My name, Clay, C L A Y, to get it hooked up today. You play a $5 pick, you get. $50 just for playing that $5. Get signed up now. We'll have some fun on Thursday night football. PrizePicks.com. My name, Clay.